In this chapter, I use the rock layers of the beach in which time essentially runs sideways across the beach to illustrate what the geologist Marsha Bjornerud calls timefulness. She writes, I see that the events of the past are still present. This impression is a glimpse not of timelessness, but of timefulness, an acute consciousness of how the world is made by, indeed made of, time. And trying to imagine whatever the opposite of fungible time is, I show the reader these beach pebbles, which happen almost mid-paragraph, like words. And I write, look again at the pebbles. Make no mistake, they are neither signs nor symbols of time. No, they really are two things at once, seafloor from the last ice age and future sand. So beach or no beach, simply making everyday observations of what we consider ecological or geological reveals how intuitive this concrete material sense of time still remains for us. And in fact, I think this is exactly what happened during the pandemic for those whose scale of attention shrunk to their house or their backyard. For example, statistics involving birding, number of birding supplies sold, number of observations logged to sites like eBird and visits to bird webcams um, show that many more people became attentive not only to the daily movements of birds, but also their migrations. Karina Newsom, an ornithologist and one of the founders of Black Birders Week, noted that spring migration coincided with the early lockdowns and that it might be therapeutic to watch the larger rhythm that continued to go on. In our stillness, other movements became more palpable. For me, one important clock ended up being an individual buckeye tree in a park that I always walk through. This tree grows leaves and flowers in the spring and goes dormant in the late summer. Uh, but that procession is uneven across the region, across a grove, across the branches of the same tree, or across the surface of a yellowing leaf. The body of the tree itself is also a record of the past, since the Buckeye's ability to go dormant is an evolutionary response to a change in the climate three million years ago. And so I write, what is a clock? If it's something that tells the time, then my branch was a clock. But unlike the clock at home, it would never return to its original position. Instead, it was a physical witness and a record of overlapping events, some of which happened long ago and some of which are still occurring as I write this. And that's, that, those images are also in, in the book. This is also a text exchange from last month when my boyfriend was here and I was in the Santa Cruz Mountains and we're observing that the clock is the same in both places. <laughs> um, okay, so what I just described is something that I describe in the book as unfreezing something in time. <laughs> 